Hey, welcome. Today in the shop, we are working on a 2011 Ford Escape with a 2.5 liter. Uh, we're dealing with a P0301 misfire on cylinder one trouble code. Uh, this 2.5 can also be found in the, uh, what, the Mercury version of the Escape, the Mariner or whatever, as well as the, what, Fusion, Milan, uh, basically any engine or any vehicle that's going to run that 2.5 liter engine or, you know, really any time you're checking a misfire, you could use these tests. Now, out in front of me today, we do have um, some not as high-tech tools as what maybe you're used to seeing. We're going to try to tackle this with some low-tech tools, no lab scope on the table today. We're using a scan tool, we'll use a test light, a light bulb that I have, as well as some uh, engine mechanical testing tools behind me here. If you know on this 2.5 liter engine, you know why, uh, why we have engine mechanical tools on the table. But I'm not going to spoil that ahead of time. We're going to go through some tests on here to prove out what the, uh, what the failure is. And in some cases with testing, we're going to prove out what it's not. So looking here at this uh, wonderful 2.5 liter under the hood, you can see that somebody has already loaded up that parts cannon and fired it off at this thing. We have three new ignition coils. I don't know why you need three coils to fix a single cylinder misfire, but hey, you know, three, uh, three new coils. So we're hoping that those are good to go. Uh, when I first got this thing, I was looking at the uh, injector um, connector here and I found the sheathing all cut apart. Somebody had gone through the trouble of putting a new connector on here and uh, twisting the wires together, putting tape over them. So I just threw some uh, temporary butt connectors in there just to make sure I have good connection to my fuel injector. So we're going to be dealing today with cylinder one, or at least that's what our trouble code is for. Now, <clears throat> if you've been working on Fords for a while, you know they don't like to set misfire codes. So uh, unfortunately, the battery died on here, so I don't actually have a misfire code stored in here right now but you'll hear as soon as I start it up, it's misfiring badly. Now, what Ford does offer a lot of times, even on an aftermarket scan tool like the Autel, you can look at what's called power balance. And basically what we're gonna be looking at is, is the cylinder contributing to the engine's rotation. Essentially, uh, for, for without, without getting into it too deeply, we're, the computer's basically watching the crankshaft position sensor for the speed of the engine. So if the engine isn't speeding up, the cylinder is being dragged along by the other three, it's going to show as a negative dip on our power balance. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we'll get this thing fired up and you'll hear immediately that it's not running well. All right, the engine's vibrating really badly and uh, yeah, it's just not running well at all. And uh, unplugging the ignition coil on cylinder one, no engine note change. Same thing with the injector, no note to the engine change. So we already know our problem is on cylinder one just by doing that. All right, so you can see here that cylinder one is uh, definitely looking like a problem. Let's unplug cylinder three just to show. Engine note changed. Cylinder three happens to be the next in the firing order. All right, so that confirms that cylinder one is actually our issue. Now, if you have a Noid light set, you could use that. I'm just gonna use this little bulb. What I wanna do right now is confirm the ability for the computer to turn on the ignition coil and turn on the fuel injector. So by putting this bulb in the circuit here, we should see it light up. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. We're not passing a ton of amperage on here, but it is in fact lit up and flashing. So it's telling me the computer is pulsing our ignition coil right now. Now you could use a, a test light for this as well. If you'd want to, a traditional incandescent bulb test light, not an LED. An LED is not gonna confirm the, the, uh, the flowing of any current on there. And then we'll do the, uh, We'll do the same thing on our fuel injector. And uh, again, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that too clearly, but the bulb is in fact lit up and flashing just like a Noid light test would do. I just don't happen to have my Noid light set here today. Um, so a bulb will do the same thing. So the coil's working. 
the injectors working, or at least the computer's making them work. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and kill fuel on this thing so we can do some mechanical testing. So with Fords, they have the inertia switch. It happens to be on the, uh, the A-pillar on the passenger side on here. I like to kill fuel right there. You know, unplugging the inertia switch allows the, or, or makes the fuel pump stop working. I don't have to do any research that way. I don't have to figure out what fuse it is, what relay it is, any of that. Because a Ford fuse box isn't labeled with names, it's labeled with numbers. So you'd have to be owner's manual or service info to figure out what injector fuse is or uh, the fuel pump fuse is, either way. So I do the inertia switch, and um, now we don't have fuel flowing to the engine. We can do some mechanical testing. Um, <clears throat> we can do a quick comparative test on the uh, coil of windings that's inside of the injector and the coil, uh, just making sure that they uh, look good compared to the others. I, I don't really care for resistance testing just because it's a static test, but uh, we're going for the, uh, you know, the lowest hanging fruit here. We're not, uh, we're not trying to spend a ton of time because I already think that this thing's probably a mechanical issue. So we'll just take an ohm test on our injector here if I can get the pin to stay on. So our injector's resistance value is about 13.8 or so. Now, I don't know if that's good. I, I didn't look up any specs on this. I'll just compare it to a cylinder that's not misfiring. Should be similar. I would say probably within one ohm of resistance, we should see. Oops. So 12.9. Our resistance is a little higher on that injector, but uh, it's not open and it's not shorted, so I'm not too concerned about it at this point. We can check our ignition coil as well. And with this, we're just really checking the primaries. It doesn't in any way confirm secondary function of the ignition coil, but uh, hey, we got, the, we got the meter out. We might as well just take a quick test. It looks like we're down around one ohm of resistance. And uh, let's compare that against what appears to be the OE coil in here. Yep, right around one ohm of resistance. This one's got about 1.5. Come on. This is where if you have a breakout lead set, it works really nice. Actually, 0.7 on that one. So there's a little bit of a difference in that. Not a ton, but uh, you know, a little bit of a difference in that. Oh, there we go. We're down around one. One ohm of resistance on, on both coils. So that <clears throat> so that's a static test on uh, on an injector and a coil. Not exactly the best test. Uh, we'd probably want to look at uh, the current ramp or something like that if we had the lab scope out. But it's a quick test that we can do. Now what I want to check, I want to check engine mechanical on here. Um, just because uh, swapping the coils didn't do anything. The um, Injector circuit is working. The coil circuit is working. Uh, I don't want to pull an injector out. That's not exactly the easiest thing to do on here. It's gonna, it would take some time. I'd be spilling fuel. I want to go for the next easiest thing. Coils come out of these things super easy. Spark plugs come out super easy. Let's throw a compression gauge in here and see what it reads. And now there's not really any... Um, there, I looked in service information, could not find a spec on what compression is supposed to read on this, en on this engine. So we'll, uh, we'll do some comparative testing. We'll start with cylinder one, which is our problem cylinder, and then we'll check another one. Uh, there you guys can see we're sitting at about, uh, about 90 PSI on here. Um, but do we know if that's good or bad? I really don't at this point. 
So we'll check, uh, we'll check cylinder three since we happen to have that coil out right now. <clears throat> and for those of you who uh, are cringing when I'm using an impact on spark plugs, first of all, I'm only using it for removal. And uh, second of all, this thing will be getting new spark plugs because I've already figured out what the problem is and uh, I'll be putting new plugs in it when it goes back together. Well, there's a big difference. So we're, well, what is that, maybe 140 or so PSI compared to 90? So cylinder one, definitely, uh, definitely low on compression. So. With cylinder one low on compression, um, we know the problem is now mechanical. It's uh, up to you if you want to go further with that uh, process or procedure. Um, for me, I like to kind of have a, a better idea besides just engine mechanical failure. Um, so we'll go ahead and just do a leak down test on here and see, uh, see what happens. We'll see which, uh, which of our... Um, where our problem lies. Is it a crankcase leak past the rings? Is it a exhaust valve leak? Is it an intake valve leak? So we'll hook up the leak down tester. Make sure everything's nice and secure. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. Grab the air hose. And now you're supposed to make sure that your, your piston's up on top dead center with the valves closed when you're, when you're doing your leak down test. I'm going to just spin the engine around with a bar on the crankshaft and see if I can get it to not leak down as I bring the piston up. So we should see changes in this gauge as I move the, uh, as I spin the engine over. So we're at about 95 PSI going into the cylinder right now. I can definitely hear it leaking through. We have 100% leakage on there. Hopefully we can kill the glare here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a, uh, a ratchet on the, uh, on the crankshaft, spin this motor around, and as we bring the piston up on the compression stroke, both valves should close, and we should reduce our leakage on that cylinder. The air should go into the cylinder and should be sealed inside of there, making it, first of all, very difficult to uh, spin the engine over. And then second of all, we should see our leakage gauge go in, uh, into that green, green spot there with, with a low leakage. So let's see what happens. So we're spinning the motor clockwise. You can hear some, a shift in the, way it, uh, in the way it sounds. We're seeing the needle move a little bit there. So it is getting a little bit harder to bring the, the bar around right now. And uh, we're still in the red. Red is bad. I have a feeling that was probably our compression stroke on cylinder one. We'll bring it back on that once more and just see. Oh, it's actually forcing the, the engine backwards. It's pushing the piston back down if I let go of the bar right now. So we're definitely on the compression stroke. See if we can leave it there and figure out if it's an exhaust valve. Now, one thing we can do to figure out if it's an exhaust valve or an intake valve, if that air is being leaked into the exhaust system, if we take this glove and stick it over the tailpipe, if we have a significant enough leak and the glove is sealed up enough, we should actually see the glove start to fill up. So let's see what's happening. So I think it's safe to say we have an exhaust valve leak on this thing. This is not simply this 2.5 liter escape waving to say hello. All right, so I was hoping for that glove to pop for dramatic effect, but unfortunately it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But it still, it confirms our problem. We have leak, leakage or leak down on our exhaust valves of cylinder number one. Now, if you're familiar with the 2.5 liters in the Ford motors um, or in the Ford vehicles, 
you'll know that exhaust valves tend to be an issue. Now, this is the first time I've seen it on cylinder one. I've seen it on cylinders two and three more commonly. Cylinder one is definitely our exhaust valve issue here. And if you're wondering about the leak down test and making sure that you uh, have the cylinder at top dead center, um, when I brought that, that uh, bar around, we should have seen that leak down change or go to basically into the, into the green section on the gauge when I brought that thing around. The fact that I could spin the engine around multiple times and never see that leak down even get out of the red section of the gauge tells me that we have a problem, not that we we're on the wrong stroke or the exhaust valve was just open or something like that. So really at this point, guys, it's gonna be time to do some mechanical teardown on here. If you're pulling the head, replacing the valve, putting a used engine in, whatever you choose to do, I will be putting, likely putting a, I don't know, maybe a used engine in here, otherwise uh, putting a cylinder head on here. Depends on what, uh, what the customer chooses to do on this one. And thanks to a little bit of video magic and editing, I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit in time to show you guys some pictures of what this exhaust valve actually looks like. Before you guys go, for those of you that have hung around through the entire video, thank you for that. I wanna reward you guys today with a GoTech t-shirt. So remember, we do have two different versions of our t-shirt. We have the pocketed t-shirt with the cool uh, wrench in hand type of thing. And then we also have a non-pocketed t-shirt with an engine on the back. So you have the option to win one or the other. Now we're gonna do it a little bit differently today. I'm gonna to send you guys out to our Facebook page today where I'm gonna have a trivia question. It's not gonna be terribly hard. Everybody who got it correct will uh, be entered in to win the t-shirt. I'll just do a random drawing. And you know what? I think I'm gonna announce the winners on our Facebook page as well. You'll find a link to that Facebook page right down below here in the description. That's gonna be the easiest, fastest way to get to our GoTech Facebook page. If you enjoyed this video, please give us that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That way you, that way you get notified when we, uh, when we come out with a new video. Also, I like to share the videos out on the Facebook page as well, so you can get notifications there. Also, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned a thing or two when diagnosing misfires, um, not only on the 2.5 liter, but you can apply these tests to just about everything on the road that has an internal combustion engine. Things are changing, right? All right, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for your time today. As always, happy wrenching. Thank you.